Hello Preppers. Welcome back to Survival Defense Tactics. Helping you take care of yourself so others won't have to. If you would, hit the like and subscribe. Possibly share this video with others. Uh, I want to say big thank you to my sponsor, U.S. Law Shield. Uh, USLawShield.com, you really need to look these guys up. Get yourself covered legally in the, in the event that you have to defend yourself or your family. Today's going to be a very short video. I keep preaching about getting your garden ready, being prepared for planting season. Today's February 11th, 2023. It's 30 some odd degrees outside. And I came out this morning and tilled half of my garden. But the events that led up to that were real simple. As much as I preach about having your garden ready, I finally did something to really, really enrich the soil. We don't have a problem, we've never had a problem growing a garden here in our backyard. But by enriching the soil, you just make it better. There's, there's no way to really describe what you're doing. You're feeding the soil, which is gonna make your vegetables grow like crazy. So, getting the story started, I've got a good friend. He uh, prefers me not to say his name, but from the fall and throughout the winter, he's been bringing me horse manure by the tote load. And by tote, I'm referring to these. The same exact thing that I made my tea tank out of, which as you can see, let me just turn around here. There's my tea tank right there. And then we've got two more totes that we link together as basically a, a water source, a miniature water tower, just for the garden. Of course, rainwater, you know, we can fill that thing up with a, with a tanker trailer that we have from the well. We can add water to it however we want to do it. But if you can imagine taking one of those totes and cutting the top off of it, just the very top of it, and fill that full of horse manure. In liquid capacity, those are 275 gallons of liquid capacity. So cut the top off, fill it plumb full of horse manure. He brought me 12 of those containers full of horse manure and we dumped it in the garden. I've spent pretty days out here trying to rake it out, spread it all out, get it all about the same thickness as far as I could. Then throughout the fall and the winter, and here we are very late winter, very early spring, I take the chickens manure from, from their bedding, bedding and all, and then the rabbits manure out of the rabbit cages, and I've been throwing it out here all winter long too. And of course there's RJ, he, he wants to be in the spotlight and he probably will be here in a minute. But I've been throwing it out in the garden in various places, kicking it around, taking a rake, spreading it out. And then this morning, like I said, I tilled about half the garden. Now I only did this to show you what preparing your soil throughout the winter does for you. So I'm going to walk out here and of course the chickens are free roam. They get pretty much the run of the place. The dogs don't mess with them. And as you can see, they're out here right now, pecking and scratching and trying to find bugs and worms and whatever they can manage to scrounge up. This is excellent for them because it's another source of protein for them and plenty of exercise. They do basically whatever they want. There's RJ, my crazy rooster. But Here's where I've tilled, and you can see how dark the soil is. And of course, like I say, the chickens are already out here scratching it up. They're aerating the soil. They're getting worms, grubs, wherever they can get their little beaks on. And then over here is where I have not tilled yet. And I honestly don't know if my camera's doing me any justice or not. But if you look close enough, you can see all the horse manure that's been thrown out that hasn't been tilled in yet. Over here, I tilled it earlier in the fall, left it alone. I've been adding to it. So there is horse manure, chicken manure, and rabbit manure throughout. And right here in this archway where we have the blueberries planted, you can see where I've thrown some in there. Of course, I kind of tilled it in. The chickens have been out here scratching like crazy. So we've been adding to the soil throughout the winter time, getting it ready for the early planting season. When planting season does come, and when it warms up enough to where I can till this whole garden one more time, as in probably somewhere in April, early April, I'm gonna get out here and get to tilling it, get everything raked off, leveled off, 
get ready to start cutting rows, getting ready to start getting everything planted. The whole entire process of a garden is multifunctional. A lot of city people don't understand this. If I want a can of green beans, I run down to the local Walmart or supermarket and buy me a can of green beans. That's fine and dandy. If you've got the money to keep doing that, knock yourself out. As a gardener, almost every gardener will tell you they grow a garden because they know what their vegetables have had on them and what they haven't. And that applies to pesticides, herbicides, whatever. You grow your own garden from seed to table, you know exactly what you've done to your vegetables. Did you use Roundup to keep weeds out? Did you spray organic fertilizer on it? Did you use all natural fertilizer like what we do? It's the peace of mind of knowing exactly what you're eating and your family. So gardening in its own benefit is healthier. Uh, more nutritious, a lot less processing involved from seed to table. Uh, we, we can our own vegetables, we can a lot of stuff. So we know exactly what has happened to that green bean, to that corn, to the potatoes, to the onions, to everything we grow. We know exactly what we've done from seed to table. The entire process, the entire fertilization, whatever it is you're doing, how much water you gave it, so on and so on. Downside to raising your own garden, it's a lot of work. I'm not going to lie about it. And telling you about the horse manure, that was probably a full day event for me after the last load got brought in and dropped. Other than that, once a week I clean out the chicken coop, the rabbit pens, I get all the manure and the bedding I can bring it out here, throw it in the garden once a week, takes me 10 minutes. Even on days when it is just nasty, nasty, bitter cold. It doesn't take much time. If you've got time to clean out the chicken coop and throw their bedding and manure in a bucket, you probably have time to throw that bucket out in the garden and just kind of kick it around, go back in and warm up. Gardening has so many benefits for doing it yourself. Uh, cost of seed, and the amount of yield you'll get off that package of seed compared to the same amount of yield of store-bought well the prices are grossly grossly different you'll spend a lot less money but at the same time on the flip side of that you'll spend a lot more time so if time is something you have and patience grow your own garden if you get the opportunity fertilize it with all natural fertilizer horse manure chicken manure, rabbit manure, whatever. Uh, not dog manure, that's a topic in and of itself. If you have tons and tons of endless supply of dog manure, I would not recommend putting that in your garden. Just the disease capability alone is disgusting. But work the ground, get it prepared, get it planted, keep the weeds out of it, keep it watered. I mean, these are all things that most gardeners watching this video already know I'm not trying to preach to the choir, but for the newer gardeners that maybe don't know so much, get mentored. Have somebody show you how they do it, and then have somebody else show you how they do it. There is no one correct be-all, end-all way of growing a garden. You simply learn what method works best for you and go with it. Keep your garden watered keeping the weeds out that's two of the biggest things you can do for it of course here here we are in southwest oklahoma we are known for our droughts we're known for our ice storms this video is actually late i was wanting to make this video about a month ago but we had to wait on mother nature to stop giving us ice storms and high winds then we had to wait for when the ice finally melted i had to wait for the water to soak in a little bit otherwise coming out here and tilling this would have been nothing but a muddy mess so in short Try to keep your gardens ready to go during the uh, winter months when you're not gardening. That doesn't mean you're not doing anything for the garden. It just means you're not growing in the garden. You can still be adding nutrients to the soil by adding manure and so forth. And you can keep, the, keep it ready for next year's season. When you grow, you'll be ready to plant and get busy. As always, thanks for listening. Stay safe. God bless.